Okay, after all the requests that came in for what these segments should be, the actual going away Shondell was the most was the most popular liked. So, uh, as I've stated before, shooting grounds are getting smaller. So the big crosses are actually, we're seeing them less and less because they take up too much ground. So I think the quarter in Shondell was one of the things you wanted to have a look it at. It was, well, yeah, James. it's probably so, a, a target that I do struggle on yeah, to be fair. Yeah, it's, so. it's a nasty target because we, we see how fast it is. Yeah. It covers so much ground and we know it's it's in transition so yeah. we've got a, quite a nice one set up off our right here so if you just take a look at one tell me and tell me your thoughts when you see it paul call loud harriet's white over there one more time paul so what, what's your initial thoughts when you see that it's very fast isn't it, it it's, that, it's a fast it, target it is yeah for me there's nowhere easy to take the shot. There's no, it's no... a confident shot. You've yeah. certainly got to trust what you're about to yeah. do. So before you tell me too much information, let me see you shoot a couple uh, and see how you approach it. Paul! Paul! Good, so... What, what was your thought process? How did you approach that shot? Well, I, uh, I chose my kill point as just, just as it got to the top of its yeah. flight path. So um, that was obviously my kill point. The viewpoint, I can see it coming out of the trap. So uh, the whole point was 50% was in between the two. And I can see why you'd struggle with them. Yeah. Some days you hit them, some days yeah. you don't. Because what actually happened was you come back along the flight path as if it was flying on a very flat trajectory. Okay. So when you took the shot, you moved like this, yeah. straight across the top. So what I want you to do is actually, we know that bird's going to rise. It's not flying a huge arc, and I'd hesitate to guess that that's probably coming from a tower. Yeah. I can tell by the trajectory of it that it's certainly not coming off the floor. Yeah, there it is, there's a tower around the corner. So it's not on a huge angle. Yeah. So what I want you to actually do is match the gun to the trajectory. And what you're doing is just going straight like, like everybody does. So if you just mount the gun towards me, I know it's empty. So what you're trying to do is as it arcs, you swing straight. Okay. So when our timing's good, we hit it. Good. When our timing's wrong, we can be in front, behind, miles offline. So what I want you to do is actually, if you imagine the arc yeah. that it's flying, we're going to cut the corner. Okay. So when we shoot the swing through method, I want to keep the swing through. So you're going to mount behind, but down, because that's what it's doing. So we're going to be behind the clay, but we're also going to be down. So the first time we see the clay, it will be top left of our barrel. Okay. We're then, as it goes over the arc, we're going to swing the same trajectory but underneath. So when we come out, we're going to be up on the front edge and take the shot. Okay. Quite a confusing method to understand yeah, because yeah. it's swing through but done in a different way. Mm -hmm. So if you imagine, we're going to go from here yeah. to here. And we're going to cut the corner off. Sort of a yeah, a diagonal line. Instead of chopping like you're doing is that, we're going to go the same trajectory as the bird. So if you look at a clock face, we're going to go from four okay. to ten. Okay? Cool. So how's that feel? Because that's very, very different it's, to how you a, shot it. It's a lot smoother method, isn't it? Like you say, it's you're going up on that diagonal line. But what it does do, you never create a blind spot. Yeah, exactly. You've got full view of the target. From the start to finish. Start. The moment you do your chop it this way, there's a point where the clay goes behind the barrel yeah. and we look or we move. Yeah. And then we're offline. What I like about that method is it keeps it in view yeah, and I can see it. And a Shondell susceptible to wind because it's like a sail. Yeah. You know, it's sideways on. So if it's in view, I can make that move. Pull! Okay, so now we've got the, uh, the shot cam back. What I'm gonna try and do is just show you a couple of shots making the move that James made when he first viewed the target. 
So instead of going up the line, I'm going to be going straight across on a tram line and trying to pick that clay off at the top. Again, doesn't mean I'm going to miss it or break it. You know, what I'm trying to do is make you more consistent. Any method will break it once. What we want to try and do is break it over and over and over. So hopefully what we're going to see now is the gun into negative lead, tram line across and take the shot by making a parallel move. Pull! Pull! So as you'll see there, it almost had to dip off at the end. The gun moved straight across. Again, making my window of opportunity to break it very, very shallow. I'm going to try and extend that window of opportunity now by coming in at, uh, at four o'clock, cutting off the angle. Now, don't cut off the angle by, it's not feet. You're still staying attached to the clay. I'm just going to gradually call upon the line. It's not down here. I'm still attached. I'm just keeping that clay in view. So again, coming up the line, working the hands. Pull. Pull. So the gun's now making a different move. It's not parallel. It's coming up from 10 o'clock to four o'clock and meeting that clay on its line before delivering the shot. Pull. Pull. And hopefully on there, you'll see that new move. Some of you might be using it, some of you may not. We're just trying to give you as many tips as we can just to try and make you that little bit more consistent.